Uh, I'm Richard Smith. I have a little vineyard in Soledad called Paraiso Vineyards. Been in the Salinas Valley since 1973. And I guess this is a little bit of a story about what I know about the history of uh, wine country in Monterey and a little bit about what we've done since we got here. Old history. California was basically developed first by the friars from uh, the Spanish missions and of course they brought along their sacramental wines or they brought along grapes to uh, plant and develop into part of their agricultural ventures. Um, in Monterey County we had the mission that was developed at San Antonio, the south end of Monterey County, was developed as a supply mission for all of the 21 missions eventually that were developed in what is now the state of California. So Mission San Antonio had 1777, somewhere in that range, developed the first vineyards to produce for the community. They also developed the first irrigation system in California, had a little dam and distribution system. And uh, so irrigated agriculture in, in California pretty much started at the San Antonio Mission in Monterey County. Early wine production was at the missions, and and of course the 1800s, later 1800s, and early 1900s, a lot of European immigration. So there were vineyards and uh, there was wine production. It was pretty much all private. Um, early 1900s, there were a couple of uh, commercial vineyards and uh, wineries. One in Soledad was the Mantis Vineyard, which was the late 1800s up to about Prohibition and actually rekindled after Prohibition. But the, um, the real commercial development as we know it today started in about 1962. We had a number of vineyards in the San Francisco Bay Area, both north of the Bay and east into Alameda County, south into Santa Clara County number of those people were being encroached upon by urban development and in the late 50s, early 60s, University of California at Davis looked around the state for places where they might grow premium grapes for wine production and the Salinas Valley, Monterey County was one of the places that they rated very high. The people who were interested in moving out of the Bay Area were the Wenties and the Marisus and the Massons and, uh, and actually Almaden. Almaden moved down into San Benito, was now San Benito County, just a little further inland than the, the Salinas Valley. But 1962 saw Masson and Marisu and Wente move to the center of the Salinas Valley and begin development. Those developments amounted to about 5,000 acres of wine grapes by the mid-60s, uh, late 60s. And late 60s in all of California, wine was becoming a, a bigger economic factor. Wine up until 1969 in California was dessert wine, was sherry's. It was a little bit of table wine, but the business of table wine was really European. It wasn't a, wasn't a strong factor in California agriculture. And from about 1965 through 1975, tremendous growth, tremendous uh, enthusiasm in developing uh, vineyards for wine. In Monterey County, that meant that 5,000 acres became 35,000 acres. And as is, I, I, I would say, almost always the case in agriculture, when there's an opportunity to make a living and do well, Farmers are very resourceful people. 
and we tend to overdo almost every opportunity that presents itself. So that 35,000 acres in 1975 became about 22,000 acres in 1985. Just too much production, too fast. The American consumer was drinking about two gallons per capita of wine products, and the European community was drinking about 25 gallons per capita. So a lot of people saw a lot of opportunity, and there was a lot of enthusiasm to grow faster than the evolutionary change of uh, the consumer. They were sure it was going to reach somewhere in the seven, eight, nine gallons per capita fairly quickly. It is 2011 today, and we've made it to 3.3 .3 gallons per capita. So uh, population is growing, consumption is growing slowly, but we are a very modest wine drinking community relative to the rest of the world. But our industry has, has gone through cycles because of the fact that the growth is dependent on consumption and consumption is dependent on our culture. And our culture is, uh, although in California we're a little bit over five, maybe six gallons per capita, California and the East Coast are closer to a five gallon per capita average, but um, the middle of America still drinks a lot of beer. And we do our share in California too, but we're, uh, we are not anywhere near the kind of culture that the European cultures are that enjoy wine as part of their, their food. It's really part of their regular meals. So we're, we're a little bit slow to grow, but we have grown. Monterey initiated their, their wine endeavors as a, as a supply for wineries from the Bay Area that I described above. As the opportunity in the late 60s and early 70s was great, most of that opportunity was seen as supplying grapes to the Bay Area. And the biggest part of the Bay Area branding at the time was Napa and Sonoma County. So we developed a lot of grapes that traveled north. We grew them here, we harvested them here, we put them into 25 ton transports and sent them as raw product to wineries north of San Francisco. It's probably still 60% the case today. We, we've gone from one or two wineries to five or six, to seven or 10, sort of that 65, 75, 85 period of time. And we're now probably about 35 wineries in Monterey County, and over a third of them are Carmel Valley, which is more of a boutique style, a small, small vineyard, small winery, small production. A lot of the product is sold directly. So the commercial part of the industry is still over in in the Salinas Valley, and we probably have 10 wineries of substantial size and another five to 10 small wineries in the Salinas Valley. We still ship a lot of our grapes out of the region. I heard the earlier presentation talk about how land use issues are uh, directly affecting how agriculture develops. And part of our industry is a tremendous value added, a tremendous increase in the kinds of skills required for employees to move from agricultural production to finished product production, packaging, and all of the in-house jobs that, that are involved in producing wine and marketing wine. So the the opportunity for the industry in 2011 is to develop more brands associated with the region, more of a reputation for the region, which you have to have brands to do. Uh, we have a great reputation for quality grapes, but 60, 70, 75 percent of our grapes still grow into products that are labeled California. And most of the people who read the paper or enjoy food and wine or are actually involved in, in sort of the wine cults, the, the folks that grab a magazine to learn more about special wines, 
are more familiar with uh, Napa, Sonoma, Russian River. But Monterey is becoming recognized. Uh, Santa Lucia Highlands, which is the coolest area in Monterey, is uh, highly recognized for Pinot Noir. It's a little bit of recognition on down San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County. We talk about what makes any agricultural area unique and Certainly the soils and water and water quality, water availability, elevation, but without a doubt, the biggest factor, especially for growing grapes for wine, the number one factor is climate. So if you go over into the Salinas Valley, which is about 100 miles long from Monterey Bay to Paso Robles, Paso Robles is about 10 miles south of the Monterey County border. Monterey Bay through the summer is basically 60 degrees and it's not very many days in July and August in Paso Robles that aren't 100 degrees. So you got a 40 degree range. And if you divided that up about every 10 miles is another four or five degrees of warmth. The way it actually happens is it's cold and foggy at the bay and it's clear and sunshiny in, in Paso Robles and by 10 or 11 o'clock it's quite warm. And that warm air lifts up and it creates a convective wind and it pulls the cold air from Monterey Bay. And it's just like a clock. It's every day by noon, the breeze has started. You may have seen a little bit of sunshine in the Salinas area. You may not have seen any sunshine at all. It may have been fog shotted all, all through the morning and early afternoon. And that fog will start moving back down the east side of the valley and the cold air mass will move down the valley. And it'll move just about Gonzales, it'll get there about noon, and it'll get down to King City about four, and it'll get down to Paso Robles about eight o'clock at night. We're a total 250,000 acres of cultivated agriculture. About 40,000 acres are now grapes, so 210,000 acres of produce, and a lot of those acres are, are farmed two or three times a year. So there's farmed acres of produce, about 500,000, and farm acres of grapes about 40,000 and every single crop is planted according to what the climate will do to make it just right. Some of the vegetable crops will be planted only in the uh, midsummer at the coldest end of the valley, but at either end of the season as you go towards start in the spring or get deeper into the fall, some of those crops that need less heat will move further south towards Gonzales or Soledad or Greenfield. Uh, our crops get planted and last for 20 or 30 years. So wine grapes have to be planted in the right place. And if you drive down the Salinas Valley today, the Monterey grape growing region basically begins about Chular. That's too cold further north for us to be able to grow any um, wine grape crops. And it'll be Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, Riesling, and crops that prefer a colder climate. And as you move down towards the Arroyo Seco area around uh, uh, Greenfield, we'll get into some of the um, uh, mid varieties. There might be a little Merlot, Chenin Blanc, a lot of Chardonnay still. Um, and as you move to the very far end of the valley down towards uh, uh, San Lucas and San Ardo, you'll get into Cabernet and more Merlot and Sauvignon Blanc. And, varieties that prefer a greater intensity of heat and they get the longer days, they get the higher temperatures and the longer days and uh, and that's a great combination for for those varieties. We're all about climate. The accumulated heat during the growing season is what makes things happen. Uh, one of the great things that happens in Monterey that's unique to our region is that cold air mass that comes down every day. Most Mediterranean climates, which Mediterranean climates are the regions where we grow wine grapes around the world, uh, warm up until three or four in the afternoon. And uh, as, the, as the evening approaches, as the sun goes down, if you're close to any big body of water, Mediterranean Sea or any of the oceans, you, you begin to cool off. And generally the evenings are down in the 50s. And it's, uh, it's a significant diurnal variation. You may go up to 80 degrees during the day and down to 50 degrees at night. 
that maintains acids, that slows up the development. The longer the development, the more flavors come along. And so if you think about the Monterey region with that cold air mass, every day is shortened. And because we're in the center of California, further north, we'll get rainfall earlier. Uh, further south, we'll get too much heat. So we're in, we're in really a perfect place in California for those moderate temperatures and short days. We can go into October and November for harvest. So uh, don't want to. We'd like to be done by the end of October. Uh, but um, again, 2011 has been a very cold growing season. Uh, it's October today. Uh, it's September 20th, but we're, we're getting real close. And uh, we haven't picked a grape yet. So it's going to be a late season. Uh, but what we know already is that the grapes have got a lot of flavor. A lot of character gets developed over time. And um, that's, that's the advantage of Monterey as a wine growing region. And it will be ultimately the, uh, the bragging rights that we will sustain our, our future on. You know, wine competition has a lot to do with, uh, it's, it's not substantially different from restaurants. It's food. Wine is food. And wine uh, produced by artisans is, uh, is a remarkable product. Food produced by artisans are a remarkable product. So if you go to dinner and you spend $50 for an entree, you expect art on the plate. You get art on the plate. You not only have wonderful food and flavors, but the presentation is great. And the same is true in wine. You have artisans who are, um, they've spent their life learning flavors of oak, learning the different yeasts and the way that they treat the uh, uh, sugars. There's actually byproducts from the yeast fermentation that have different flavor characters. And there are different regions that have different flavor characters. So you can buy grapes in two different areas, or you can buy two different types of Chardonnay. There are probably seven different clones of Chardonnay, and they each have a little bit unique character, or many of them have unique characters. There are probably 20 unique clones of Pinot Noir with uh, unique characters. And those characters change when they're grown on Paraiso Vineyards in Soledad, which is in the Santa Lucia Highlands, which is the coldest area in Monterey County. You'll get a different character than if you grow them in the Arroyo Seco, which is only seven miles away. But it's warmer, less wind, richer soil, uh, and so you get, you get different characters. And you may actually make a better wine with the blended characters of two different regions than with the unique uh, characters of a particular property. What you, what, what you will see, I think, in the future is, and we're seeing it now, we've seen it in the last 10 years, Santa Lucia Highlands has been, been highly recognized as a Pinot Noir area. Artisan Pinot Noir winemakers from Santa Clara County and Sonoma County and Napa County are buying grapes in Monterey County and, and distinguishing their wines by using a vineyard appellation. So they're saying, we bought these grapes at Paraiso Vineyards, but we produce them at La Rochelle Winery. And La Rochelle has a, an artisan winemaker who has his own preferences for oak and yeast and uh, how long he cold soaks before he starts the fermentation, what temperatures he ferments at. So all those things are, are part of the character that make the wine that then gets uh, critical recognition. and. Um, that's, that's been a really big deal. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's worth commenting in, in the fact that we're talking about Monterey history that almost all of us since the 60s who are in the wine industry have come from outside the area. Uh, one of the exceptions is uh, in the Santa Lucia Highlands in the Pinot Noir grape growing business uh, two local families, the Pizzonis and the Franchonis, uh, decided, along with their row crop ventures, to get involved in wine grapes. And uh, rather than selling commercially as we all did, they went to a bunch of the artisan winemakers and, uh, and broke that glass ceiling, honestly, uh, got premium winemakers from other regions to buy small lots. And I'm, I'm 
saying less than 10 tons, certainly less than 20 tons. Uh, a ton of grapes makes about 60 cases of wine. So they, they went to small artisan winemakers and asked them to work with small volumes of our wines, of our grapes, to see what kinds of wines they could produce. And they made wines that were, got critical acclaim, got 90 points and 94 points and 100 point scale um, for people in the industry who track the, uh, the upper echelon. It would be, uh, if you were a golfer, you'd be looking at the, uh, the Monterey Peninsula golf courses as some of the best. If you're uh, into uh, food and food and wine, you'd be looking at some of the fine restaurants in this area as the best. And we now have critics looking at some of our wines as the best. We are becoming recognized probably easily recognized as the best source of Chardonnays in the state. And that's reflected by the fact that it's probably half the grapes that we grow in Monterey County are Chardonnay. Pinot Noir probably has the highest number of critically acclaimed wines in the recent past, but we have some tremendous grapes. Uh, we've had great Merlots, we've had great Sauvignon Blancs, we have a great Malbec, a couple of great Malbecs that are out now. The history has been for most of us to supply large volume commercial producers. And that's kind of my business. I farm about 3,000 acres on 17 vineyards between Gonzales and Bradley. It was about a 70 mile stretch. And we produce for basically six or seven major buyers and uh, about 20 buyers in total, grapes of 20 different varieties and a variety like Chardonnay probably in seven or eight different locations. So the, the history of our region is to promote, produce premium wine grapes for large producers who use our product as the backbone. The future will be a, a larger number of independent producers producing small wines of quality. That's, that's the only way to build a reputation and that's the only way to get recognition. So that's, that's our future.